an emergency department physician trained in pediatric advanced life support. You are working in the pediatric emergency department when a mother brings her four-year-old son into the ED. She reports that the child was playing with toys on the floor when the symptoms began. The child's breathing is rapid and shallow. You take vital signs and note that the child's heart rate equals 124, respiratory rate equals 32, and oxygen saturation equals 88%. 1. The correct order of assessment for this child is A. Airway, breathing, circulation B. Airway, circulation, breathing C. Circulation, airway, breathing D. Breathing, airway, circulation Correct answer, A. Airway, breathing, circulation. The clinician should understand that most cardiovascular issues leading to cardiac arrest in children begin with respiratory issues. Therefore, the order of assessment must be airway, breathing, and then circulation. 2. Based on your training in PALS, the next intervention for this child should be a. Apply cardiac monitor. B. Administer 100% oxygen. C. Administer nebulized epinephrine. D. Intubate the child. Correct answer, B. Administer 100% oxygen. The oxygen saturation of less than 94% indicates that oxygenation is decreased. After a few minutes of 100% oxygen, the pulse oximeter indicates that the child's oxygen saturation has increased to 100%. 3. At this point you should A. Keep the current oxygen setting B. Remove the oxygen C. Titrate the oxygen to keep oxygen saturation greater than 94%. D. Intubate the child. Correct answer, C. Titrate the oxygen to keep oxygen saturation greater than 94%. The child is responding to oxygen, but it is not a good idea to keep the oxygen saturation at 100%. Begin to turn the oxygen concentration down. During your assessment, you note that the child has inspiratory strider, use of accessory muscles, and nasal flaring, particularly on inspiration. You also notice that the child has a harsh barking cough. 4. You suspect A. Lower airway obstruction B. Upper airway obstruction C. Lung tissue disease D. Disordered control of breathing. Correct answer, B. Upper airway obstruction. Inspiratory strider, increased respiratory effort, and barking cough characterize upper airway obstruction. The barking cough would also indicate that the diagnosis is most likely croup. As you continue to monitor the child, you notice that he is awake and crying. He is a febrile. The cardiac monitor shows this rhythm. 5. You recognize this rhythm as A. Sinus tachycardia B. Probable SVT C. Ventricular tachycardia D. Sinus rhythm Correct answer, A, sinus tachycardia. The narrow QRS, less than 0.09 seconds, rules out ventricular tachycardia. There is a P wave for every QRS. The rate is fast. You get a soft tissue x-ray of the neck, which is negative for a foreign body. Six, the next intervention appropriate for this child is a. Consider intubation. B. Percussion and postural drainage. C. Nebulizer treatment with epinephrine. 
D. IV epinephrine. Correct answer, C. Nebulizer treatment with epinephrine. For a child with croup, the team should use a nebulizer treatment to treat inflammation and closed airways. As you continue to monitor the child, his breathing slows to eight breaths per minute, breath sounds diminish, and oxygen saturation decreases to 88%. Seven, your next intervention is to A, consider intubation. B, percussion and postural drainage. C, repeat the nebulizer treatment with epinephrine. D, administer IV epinephrine. Correct answer, A, consider intubation. You should immediately provide PPV with a bag mask device while preparing the intubation equipment. The child's symptoms would indicate that he is progressing toward respiratory failure. You decide to intubate the child using a cuffed tube. Eight, the correct size of ETT for this four-year-old child would be A, three millimeter, B, 3.5 millimeter, C, 4 millimeter, D, 5 millimeter. Correct answer, D, 5 millimeter. An easy equation to quickly calculate the estimated size of an ETT is age divided by four plus four. The clinician should always have a size bigger and a size smaller on hand in case the child is larger or smaller than average. Nine, the correct depth of insertion of this ETT for this four-year-old child would be A, eight millimeters, B, 10 millimeters, C, 12 millimeters, D, 15 millimeters. Correct answer, D, 15 millimeters. An easy way to estimate this is to take the size of the ETT, in this case five, and multiply times three to get an approximate depth measured at the child's teeth. After intubation, always verify that there is equal and adequate chest rise with ventilation. You successfully intubate the child and use a positive pressure ventilation device to provide ventilation and oxygenation. You notice that the chest rises symmetrically and fully. The child's oxygen saturation increases to 96% and he appears to be more comfortable. The pediatrician assumes the care of the child.